We would not give up our own country, Ireland, if we were to get the whole world as an estate, and the country of the young along with it. Augusta Percy was born March 15, 1852. She was the twelfth child of Lord Dudley Percy, an Anglo-Irish Protestant whose family had to come to Ireland during Cromwellian times. As a child, Augusta heard folk tales from her Irish nurse Mary Sheridan. On the 4th of March 1880, Augusta married Sir William Gregory. She was 28 years old and he was 63. In Sir William's, Lady Augusta found an intellectual equal. The pair traveled widely in their 12 years of marriage. In 1881, a few months after the birth of their only son, Robert, the Gregories traveled to Egypt. While there, Lady Gregory published her first work, a 5,000-word pamphlet entitled Arabi and His Household, in defense of Egyptian nationalist Ahmed Arabi Bey. Though this pamphlet was in support of Egyptian freedom from English occupation, Lady Gregory and her husband were both Unionists, supporting the English control of Ireland. Sir William died in 1892. Upon his death, Lady Gregory focused her intention of finishing his work, Autobiography. After its publication, she turned to the work his grandfather had done. Sir William's grandfather had been the Under Secretary of State for Ireland, and Lady Gregory constituted a narrative from his later, publishing them under the title Mr. Gregory's Letterbox. During the editing process, Lady Gregory thoroughly researched Irish history. It was this research that inspired her to join the Home Rule Movement. I defy anyone to study Irish history without getting a dislike and distrust of England. In 1894, Lady Gregory began to learn Irish alongside her son. Around this time, two works on Irish folklore were published, The Celtic Twilight by W.B. Yeats and Love Songs of Connacht by Douglas Hyde. The imagination of Ireland has found a new homing place. My own imagination was aroused. I was becoming aware of a world close to me that I had been ignorant of. Inspired, Lady Gregory began to collect fairy tales from her native Celtarin around 1896. She traveled cottage to cottage, stopping in and listening to the stories people had to tell. Unlike some of her contemporaries, Lady Gregory understood Irish very well, making her far more adept at collecting the tales. Visions and Beliefs of West Ireland, the volume most of these stories appear in, was not published until 1920. Discussions about forming the famed National Theatre of Ireland, later known as the Abbey Theatre, began in 1897 between Lady Gregory, Yeats, and Edward Martin. It was Lady Gregory who suggested they open a theatre in Dublin as a way to present Irish plays. A year later, at the beginning of 1898, a Kiltartan branch of the Gaelic League was established. The Gaelic League was dedicated to promoting the study of Irish, a cause with which Lady Gregory became closely associated. In 1900, debates about the worth of teaching Irish in secondary school came to a head. Professors at Trinity College were against teaching both the language and its literature. In order to show the worth of Irish literature, Lady Gregory translated two of its biggest works. Rather than offering a direct translation of the archaic Irish text, Lady Gregory combined the work with the storytelling style she was familiar with from collecting folklore to present a much more readable text. The resulting works, Cuckolan and Morhatham and Gods and Fighting Men were more an attempt to popularize a story than to present a literacy criticism. Lady Gregory was also an important contributor to the Irish literary revival. Her patronage of the Abbey Theatre, translations, original plays, and political writings helped to bring about a greater understanding and appreciation of the Irish language and culture. When she died in 1932, the Irish Times credited her not only as a co-creator of Abbey Theatre and a playwright, but as a key member of the Irish literary revival, saying, If it had not captured her interest at the outset, the Irish literary revival, the germ of a movement which has become celebrated throughout the whole world, almost inevitably must have lost its Irish character within a very few years. She it was who ordained that the centre of the movement should become Dublin and not London. Lady Gregory's contribution to Irish language, folklore and literature cannot be overlooked. She helped to bring about a new understanding and appreciation of Irish folklore. As she said, another of my objects, the one nearest to my heart, is the making of the soul of Ireland sacred by getting legends known.
Hi, I'm Emily Benish. Hi, I'm Nathan Villain. Uh, so in approaching our, pro our video project on Lady Gregory, we decided to look at who she was, um, how her personal history inspired her publications, and her influence on folklore and on Irish literature. One of the challenges of this project was that Lady Gregory is better known for her work with the Abbey Theatre and her plays. There isn't much easily accessible works on her as a folklorist. Um, so the biggest decision that we had to make was what to include in the video. Because of the time restraints, we were very limited with what we could include. So we had to overlook a lot of her original works and her work with the Abbey Theatre in order to focus on um, her as a folklorist. So there's a lot about Lady Gregory that we had to cut. This project was useful because we had the chance to learn more about Irish folklore and history, specifically about an important Irish figure we had no prior knowledge of.